Is this on? Yeah. Welcome to the 31st ApacheCon. My name is Rich Bowen, and I will be your host this week. If you need anything, just make sure you look for me or anyone else that is wearing one of these little badges that says, Ask Me. Uh, we're also celebrating the 20th anniversary, the 20th birthday of the Apache Software Foundation. 20 years ago, the gentleman sitting on the front row here and a few others started this foundation to produce software for the public good. And so we're thrilled to have you here to celebrate the birthday with us. We'll be having a birthday cake this evening at the reception. We hope you'll all come. Especially important to thank our sponsors. We, uh, we have some great sponsors this year. Uh, these are our, our platinum sponsors, IBM, Datastax, Google Cloud, and Tencent Cloud. And our gold sponsor is Red Hat, AWS, and Ballerina. So please do visit their booths and uh, thank them for making this event possible. Uh, our silver sponsors and our bronze sponsors also helped to make this event possible. These uh, sponsors listed at the bottom sponsored individual portions of the event, such as our lightning talks and our hackathon and our meals. So once again, please do visit them and thank them for being part of this. We also have a number of community sponsors, community partners that help get the word out, both before and after the event. Uh, a few announcements before we move on to the keynote. Uh, we do have a number of opportunities for you to meet other people within the community. The first of these is the reception this evening at 7 o'clock. It will be right here in the Expo Hall. And at that time, you can uh, visit all of our sponsors and meet your fellow attendees. Shortly after the beginning of that, after we cut the cake, we will have a PGP key signing. For those of you that sign software releases or if you wish to verify signatures, this is the place that you can come and uh, uh, have your keys signed and build the web of trust. There is more information about that on the website and in the mobile app. Later in the week, we have a few other events that you won't want to miss. The first of these is the lightning talks. This is an annual tradition where you, the attendees, can give a five-minute talk on whatever it is that's of interest to you that's presumably at least somewhat related to Apache. Uh, there's only five rules. It will take five minutes, otherwise, at the end of which you'll be thrown off the stage, and uh, you can't use any slides, and uh, it can be any topic, like I said. Each evening, we have birds of a feather sessions. These are places where you can talk with people with shared interests, and these will be happening all over the show floor. You can sign up by emailing me at rbowen at apache.org. That, uh, that link is also on the website, or just accost me in the hallway. Every morning at 7, uh, jean frederic Claire and a number of other crazy people will be meeting in the lobby, and you can meet with them if you want to go running. All day, every day, in Lachlan 3, which is just down the hall, we have the hackathon. That is for you to work on projects with the rest of the community. Uh, it's, you can work on code or documentation or design or decision or just get to know the other people in your community. We encourage you to take advantage of that space. And then finally, on Wednesday, the ballerina community will have a hackathon all day long in the Lake Mead rooms. We do have a mobile app. Uh, the the app, app itself is called Cl Crowd Compass Attendee Hub. You can get that from, from your app store. And then uh, search for ApacheCon to load the content for this event. In order to use that, you'll just need to use the name under which you registered. And uh, it'll, uh, that, that'll allow you to build your own schedule and keep track of what you want to attend. If you do social media, we would really appreciate it if you would use these hashtags so that we can track what people are saying about us and respond to your questions if you want to ask us anything or uh, have any problems that you need addressed. We also have a Slack channel. And the URL for joining that is on this slide. And of course, you don't have time to write that down. So it is also on the front page of the ApacheCon website if you want to join us on Slack. Which brings us to our first keynote. 
I mentioned that we are celebrating the 20th birthday of the foundation, and I would like to welcome to the stage some of the people that helped make that happen, to talk about both how things were in the old days and the vision going forward. So if you will all uh, come on up, we can get started. Thank you for your attention, and please welcome our first keynote panel. So welcome all. Um, thank you for all, all for showing up. Um, I see a lot of filled seats, and uh, I have to say that um, my memory of ApacheCon, like in the early 2000s, the 9 a.m. slot sort of had a uh, attendance issue, given it is in Vegas. So um, thank you all for uh, being here. Um, I'm going to ask these people here on stage, um, a subset of the founders of the Apache Software Foundation, which, by the way, I'm not a part of. Um, um, and, uh, and tell you a bit about the history and um, how Apache influenced our lives. So Mark, why don't you tell us how you got involved with the Apache Server Foundation? Thanks, Sander. It was uh, 1995, and uh, it was Brian here who invited me to join the new HDBD mailing list. I'd found and fixed a number of security issues in the NSSA web server, and uh, as a fellow administrator, I'd sent them to Brian for his site as well. But it wasn't until 1998 that we actually first met all together. And that was where we discussed the creation of the Apache Software Foundation. So we did what all developers love to do, and we hiked down a cliff and took pictures at a waterfall, which is this picture here. Now, this actually really worried me because here were most of the Apache developers at the time in the same place at the same time. And it's not like San Francisco is known for natural disasters. Um, also, Microsoft were really worried. We were taking share away from them at uh, a rapid pace. And perhaps more plausible as a risk was that we'd end up at the San Francisco down in Fisherman's Wharf eating the same cheap, dodgy sushi. That's the way my brain works. I, I was seeing it as a risk, and, and the code was out there, right? The code was already there on tens of thousands of machines around the world, but the people were what mattered. The people had the same, same goals, the same vision, and the same mission, and we wouldn't be here today if something had happened back to us then. And when I was thinking about coming up to talk to you today, that's what kind of resonated with me, that that's the Apache way, that the community is more important than the code. And this was a very good, to me, demonstration of that. So Apache has weaved and intertwined its way through the last 20 years of my life in, in every way, from writing Apache Week, joining C2Net, writing the Stronghold web server. Then when C2Net was getting bought by Red Hat, dealing with lawyers is how I met my wife. Um, then, at an Apache con early on, um, a group of Apache developers came together and founded OpenSSL, um, which is, came from that as well. It's a mixed blessing knowing security. It's not a job that people particularly want to do. At Red Hat, the uh, VP of engineering called me up one day and he said, uh, Mark, you know security. We don't have a security team. You're it. Um, and, and that was my next 18 years of my life handling security issues at Red Hat and, until I could no longer uh, deal with handling security issues at Red Hat. Uh, now, I, it's fortunate, I, I work part-time and I spend half of my time working on Apache and the other half working on OpenSSL upstream, handling security issues. <laughs> Thank you. Sandra. Okay, cool. Thank you, Mark. It's awesome. Cliff, maybe you can explain why we were actually setting up a foundation. Yeah, and that was a really great hike that we had when we uh, all got together and met for the first time. It was really great meeting people that I had been working with for years on a mailing list. At the time, Brian and I were founding a company, and we needed a web server. Uh, we found other people that were also working on companies uh, and needed a good web server. 
We realize that if none of us individually could do enough code and create a quality product that we could use in our own commercial ventures. So open source was great. You know, it allowed us to give a little bit and get a lot back. And that's one of the reasons why Apache, the original HTTP server, adopted a very business-friendly license. But a business-friendly license is really not enough. Uh, what we really needed was some, some infrastructure to allow existing corporate entities uh, a place to call, the ability to give donations, uh, to run things like ApacheCon. And it helped the developers also. It let us have better infrastructure, uh, gave a little bit of formality to the community, uh, allowed us to define what member responsibilities were more than just, you know, hey, here's your commit privileges. And of course, I'll mention it again, ApacheCon has, has been great. You know, these days I'm not actively contributing to the Apache Software Foundation, but it has affected my life in ways that I would not have expected 20 plus years ago. I've made many friends who I've known for years. Uh, my current job, uh, which is running a company deploying event technology, uh, was a direct result out of my participation at ApacheCon. You know, so the participation has been a, a great influence, and I'm very excited you know, when I show up at ApacheCon to see how much things have changed and how much everybody here has taken things forward. So I appreciate being a part of the, the organization. Thank you, Cliff. So Lars, we, we can help but notice that you're not in this picture. Um, were, were you like late to the party? <laughs> yeah, I, was, I guess I was a bit late to the party. Um, yeah, my name is Lars Aderbrecht. Um, so unfortunately, I, I missed that initial meeting and, and get together because I only joined the uh, Apache group a month later, July 1998. Um, I was a, like how I got involved, basically I, I was a student at that time. And uh, a German publisher, approached me because they wanted to um, uh, publish a book about the Apache web server. Um, so while researching and, and playing around and testing various things with Apache, I ran into a lot of issues, bugs, and started sending a lot of bug reports to the Apache group, like a lot of bug reports. Um, and uh, eventually, because some were slow to be picked up, uh, eventually I fixed the, the, the bugs myself, so I submitted some patches as well. Um, so eventually, they, uh, I, I received, a, a, well, because I, I needed to finish the, 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 the book, so I was chasing them because they weren't quick enough to, to, to tell me, okay, is the code wrong? Is the documentation wrong? In some cases, I didn't know what to write in the book. So eventually, I received an invitation to join the Apache group, July 1998. Um, obviously, I was, I was very honored, but also a little bit surprised because I thought, well, Okay, I've submitted a lot of bug reports and a few patches here and there, but I thought it's not really enough to really be invited to be part of the Apache group. And I remember an email, so when I pointed this out um, after accepting the invite, obviously, uh, I got an email from Ben Laurie where he, where he said, um, if the Apache group measured contributions based on the number of lines of code contributed, um, it would be poorer for it. And I think that statement is still very, very valid today for the ASF in general, uh, because code contributions, sorry, not code, contributions come in all sizes and shapes. It's sometimes the non-code contributions that matter even more and have made the ASF what it is today. Um, apart from, from code contributions, I've also, immediately after the ASF was created, um, basically, initially, we had three projects. We had the web server, we had the Jakarta project, and we had a conference planning project with the intention of producing Apache conferences. And I, I jumped, basically, at the opportunity of, of helping with conference planning because, um, yeah, I thought it was a very good opportunity to, well, how to put it, to educate the world about what Apache is, what open source is. And it was a very good way to, to build the developer and user community around Apache. And I think it is um, what has grown the, or what, what, what helps to grow Apache, the ASF, into what it is 
today. Um, so I did that for like, for like 10, 10, 10 years, helping to, to create these Apache conferences and related um, events. Um, I think another reason why, um, just going back to what, what Cliff said about the Apache software license, I think that's one of the other reasons that's very important um, and, and actually um, resulted in Apache becoming that popular, in my opinion. Uh, because if someone goes to the Apache website, you can be assured that whatever you download in terms of the application, it will be published under the Apache software license. Cool. Thank you, Lars. <laughs> Roy, I know you're going to love this. So uh, <laughs> the uh, original Apache group had a, had a number of traits. And uh, we have um, um, something called the Apache Way today. Um, what did we capture uh, since the start, and what did you want to uh, make sure that we kept until today um, from those original traits? Thanks, Andrew. Uh, so I'm Roy Fielding. You may know me from my work on legal stuff or something else. Uh, but when I started Apache, um, I first met Brian at the first web conference in Geneva. Uh, but other than that, I hadn't met anyone else. Um, what I was doing was working as, on the HTTP specification for the IETF and working with the W3C to do that. Uh, and what I found was that I needed a, uh, a, a way to demonstrate the changes that we were making to HTTP in a way that had at least equal weight with the work that was being done in, at Microsoft and at Netscape regarding their servers. So for me, it was both a, a way to extend that the great stuff that we did as um, creating the original World Wide Web project, which itself was a big collaborative software project spread across the entire world, and uh, which had just then moved into being a commercial effort more than anything else. And so when I heard that, that Brian was setting up this group, I was eager to join and um, to get involved. And I, I would say that the most important characteristic of Apache, the Apache group leading into the ASF, was this notion that we were all over the world. Um, this, the meeting that you see in the picture is our first actual meeting together, three years after we started the project. So we, we did three years in which I had met um, Brian in Geneva and I'd met Robert Tao in, at MIT, but that was it. That's the, the extent of the, uh, I think by the time we started the ASF, there was almost 30 members. So 30 people I've been collaborating with for basically four, five, four years at the time. And um, the most, you know, for me, uh, doing that via the mailing list was the most natural way because that's how we built the web. Uh, but for, uh, for the group as a whole, the central problem we found was that the, uh, how do we figure out how to collaborate? Because it wasn't just that we were all working on a common software project, it's that we all had distinct interests in that project. So we had commercial interests, we had someone running an ISP, we had um, three graduate students doing degrees in, actually four, um, uh, various, various areas, astrophysics, um, robotics. Mine was in software engineering and I was interested in building something like GitHub. Of course, GitHub did it better, um, using our software. And uh, um, so, so that was our perspective. And the interesting thing about it, I have a background in, in political science and computer science. So I, I sp spent a lot of time talking about how to organize people and how to think about people. But um, the thing about Apache was it was entirely organic in nature in the sense that, you know, we overnight we came up with a system for, for voting about patches, plus one, minus one, zero. That's just something that Rob Hartzell made up on the fly. There's no, there was no collaborative agreement about it. There was no plan involved. It was just, I'm just going to say plus one. And then we all followed that. So it worked. So we kept it. And that was the thing. We, we kept working on the mailing list on things that, that worked, we kept. Things that didn't work out, we just silently forgot about. Um, and like any group effort, it, wasn't, it was you know, all about the people. It wasn't about the software. 
And I think the most important thing that, that we pushed into the foundation when we founded the foundation was this notion that everyone should govern themselves for the creation of their individual projects. So we, we in the server group, had a notion of how we worked best together. But we couldn't tell the other projects how to do that. It's something they had to learn on their own and possibly modify on their own. So I think that's one of the, the keys to our success, success was that we provided that flexibility to the foundation as a whole. Thank you, Roy. That's a great answer. So Roy, you, you mentioned change over time. So, uh, Jim, you've, you've been a, a constant factor on, uh, on the board of Apache um, almost since the start. Um, can you walk us through like, the changes over like, the last two decades um, and how Apache influenced your life in that process? Uh, when, when Sandra told me I was going to be talking about that, I had this look of horror on my face. Um, I, I, for me, what got me involved with, uh, with Apache was at the time I was working for, uh, for NASA Goddard. Uh, even back then, I would consider myself a gray beard because uh, I loved uh, Unix. And uh, at the time, NASA was just using VAX VMS. And we were all moving to, uh, to Mac uh, workstations. And Apple came out with this software called AUX, Apple Unix. Uh, which I fell in love with, I thought it was great, but none of the software that was powering the internet was actually ported to that. So that's what I did. I actually ported a bunch of software over, including Apache HTTPD, and that was the first thing that I did. So there were some, punches, uh, some uh, patches that I provided and just sent to the mailing list, and uh, I received some positive feedback, some non-positive feedback, and learned from, uh, from all of that. Um, and it basically changed my life by changing my career path of being, since that time, I stopped working for NASA. I focused uh, mostly on the open source and software development space. Uh, and it's really, really enriched my life. One of the things I say a lot of times at conferences is that open source and Apache have done more for me than I think that I can ever give back. And so a lot of what I try to do is do everything I can to give back to the community. One of the common themes that people were talking about was uh, friends. You know, you make so many good friends in this environment. Uh, I think it goes even deeper than that. You actually make people, meet friends that you consider are family to you. And that's important to the DNA of us. It's that sense of community, that sense of family, which I think is very, very important to us. And I think that's something that is really, really hard to maintain for 20 plus years, especially when you go from a small group of 30 people to a large, large number of, of members, an even larger number of uh, committers and contributors. How do you maintain that? How do you maintain that sense of family? How do you maintain that sense of community? Um, and I think that's most probably the biggest challenge that, that all communities are, are reaching with nowadays. And I think that we basically have the answer to that. And it's like all the tenets of how we build and grow our communities, how we build and grow our software projects. Uh, that's how you maintain that. You maintain that openness. You maintain that, that, that peer respect. And one of the biggest changes, one of the things that, that Sandra asked me to, to talk about was the, uh, the changes uh, in the board, for example. Um, I've been, I was up until last year, I was been serving on the board for, you know, basically since day one. And I think we've been blessed with the board. Every, every year have been passionate people who have the best interests of the foundation at heart. And I think that that's basically one of the cornerstones of help us guide that is that these directors are, are, are leaders, but also stewards. And they're really the people that we look up to and we hope to emulate at times. So I think that uh, my call to action before I, I pass over to, to Brian would be uh, get much more involved, really, really give back to this community, because again, I promise you that whatever you give back to the community, you will get back tenfold, I promise you. Thanks, Jim. Brian, you were uh, very early in, uh, in, in the whole Apache group. Um, 
Um, I think it would be interesting to hear from you, um, first of all, what has Apache done to your life, but also how do you see Apache in the future? Great, thanks, Ender. Um, so, let's see. Uh, 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 first, I want to note that you know the folks who are up here on stage were the ones lucky enough to be able to both respond to an email suggesting they come out to San Francisco in June of 1998, and lucky enough to have been able to work on things publicly when a lot of people at the time might not have, right? Uh, and not to get like overly nostalgic about the past or whatever, but um, the internet in 1998 or 95 was a very different internet than we have today, right? Um, it was a lot easier to be a 19-year-old kid, it, a freshman in computer science, uh, I, I, you know, like me, uh, jumping onto an IETF working group mailing list and spewing nonsense and having somebody like Roy correcting me on that, right? Which was really awesome. In fact, I think the reason why like, I gravitated to the NCSA working group, or the NCSA HTTPD list was the fact that like, I could ask people, how did this work? Here's a bug that I think fixes a problem, uh, or a patch that I think fixes a bug, uh, or adds some feature, and, uh, and there were actually people who were nice enough to be able to, re to respond and tell me how completely broken that patch was. Uh, and not only that, but because it was so annoying that it was so broken, they would actually fix it, right? So like this open source thing seemed like a great scam. I, I could, uh, you know, fix bugs and have all these friends, or uh, I could have all these friends fix the bugs in my code. Um, uh, and so uh, thinking about like what happens from here, what, what, what goes forward, and we, I want to think about that, that time, right? It was a time when um, you could, uh, uh, there was actually a rather large window that I think is narrowed. The window was, you know, you're confident enough about your code and your skills to be willing to share publicly what you've done, but then also humble enough uh, uh, to be able to take criticism and commentary and build from that rather than, you know, crouch into a hole and go, forget it, I'm not ever sharing again, right? That window has narrowed out there in the rest of the internet. Everybody's online, everybody has an opinion about why your code sucks, and people tend to be less willing to help you. So one thing that I want to make sure we do more of in the future going forward is expand that window, right? Really fight against the forces that make people hesitant to share, make people, like, afraid of the feedback they're going to get. We've got to invert that. And and, and encourage that uh, and keep that window wide open. Um, the second thing that I think has been a hallmark of us that I think is still a fight that we have to fight is we all participate in Apache as individuals, as uh, not representatives of a company that we work for, uh, but as people who are, 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 you know, have names, right? <laughs> Roy and Mark and Brian, and that we keep our relationships and we keep our reputation and we keep our engagements even as we change hats and paychecks uh, and geographic locations. Um, and, you know, Apache was once described, I mean, it's a nonprofit, what kind of nonprofit. I loved the term guild as applied to what we build because that the concept of a guild is much less about the outputs, the, 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 the work that gets created, although the presumption is that those are high quality, but those are high quality because of uh, who we are and our connections between ourselves and the standard that we all set for each other about how we work together. That's the important thing, um, the second important thing. And then the third for me is, um, so again, in these early days of the internet, I think there was uh, uh, this kind of uh, pregnant kind of assumption that what we were building was going to matter, right? It was going to be uh, something that laid the, the rails, the foundation for lots of what was going to follow for the next few years. Um, uh, and, and there were people among us who took a lot you know, a lot of time and careful thought about uh, I, you know, what we were building. And sometimes the architects got it right, you know, with TCP IP or REST or other foundational pieces. Sometimes they got it wildly wrong. Um, I suggested a header on the, HT, on the uh, WWW talk mailing list called state, which would keep track in the client side of some interesting information so the server could change what it told the client, which then Lou Montulli implemented as the cookie header uh, in Netscape Navigator. And I'm sorry. I will try not to do that again. Um, it's one reason you don't see much technologically for me uh, going forward. But all of us are, have a role to play uh, in, especially now, in thinking about the technologies that we build and how we build them. Uh, because it's not, not, not only is everybody online at this point, everybody's glued to their screens. And thinking about the design, everything from the front end all the way to the deepest back end is really critical. Look at how things like infinite scroll have now you know, caused certain behaviors in society you know, that, that are subtle but pervasive and either wildly positive or in some cases wildly negative. And what I really hope that Apache, uh, uh, you know, what I think it's been and what I hope it continues to be is a place where we can have these conversations, not about 
just about, you know, does this uh, pull request fix that bug? But what is the kind of technology we want to build? What, what, what actually will lead to a more gener generative, positive future? Uh, and, uh, uh, and something we're all proud of looking back on 20 years later, uh, I, even from this point, right? So that's, I, I think, I, the role that I think Apache can play, very broadly stated, in all these new technologies, you know, by virtue of the fact it's not just about the web technologies, it's not just about Java, it's about the full sweep, and has really focused on who we are as individuals. Uh, and finally, I want to say, you know, this is a fun panel to be a part of. We're, you know, we're interesting people. Get to know us if you are interested. But there's a lot of people who could be on this stage, who should be on this stage. People like Sally Kuderi, who got involved with the project months after this photo was taken and have done more, I think, than anybody else in helping the world understand who Apache is and how we work. People like Denise Cooper, thank you. Let's give her a hand, please. She's here in the back somewhere, I think. People like Denise Cooper, people like Sam Ruby, people who, I mean, we were not a rocket ship that suddenly now there's this satellite in space floating around in stasis. Um, this was a snowball effect. This was, we kind of like maybe tipped that snowball, kind of jumped in and as it started rolling. But all these people, and uh, frankly, all of you, are now participating in this continuous snowball climb, uh, snowball roll. So I don't know if there's an end to it, but uh, <laughs> um, I, I, that's, you know, that's, that's just what I hope we all do together as the Apache community. Thank you. Awesome. Brian, thank you. And uh, I think that also shows like one of the, the other traits that we always see, which is uh, appreciate others and, and don't make it about you. So really appreciate the, appreciate the humility that you put up here, Brian. That's great. Um, everyone, let's just thank uh, Cliff Skolnick, Jim Dukelski, Lars Eilebrecht, uh, Mark Cox, Brian Bellendorf, and Roy Fielding.